Hey, this is Tina with Rehatch Designs. Hope everybody's doing well. Basically, we're just making covers for um, journals that I kind of showed you how to make in the last one with um, di that were disc mount, okay? And there's two different styles. There's one where you use a punch, and then there's one where you use uh, the paper um, that comes in um, one of a uh, similar type of bound uh, book like this. It doesn't have to be media paper. It could be whatever paper that's bound like this. You can use that paper because of the way it's punched out. Okay. Um, so anyway, this is the p actual papers that would go inside, but we're working on the covers right now. So let's get going on that because we have a lot to cover. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the things that need to dry. And we have two different kind of covers that we're working on. We're doing the, um, I don't know if I'm going to have time to do the back of this one today, but we'll try. But this is one cover. Here's another cover. Um, so we're doing two different styles because we're doing two different kinds, okay? Um, but anyway, um, we're going to try and get at least the front covers done on these. The back's going to be done pretty much the same way, so I don't know if I'll, I'll do that with you. I might do that, you know, later. And the back will be pretty much the same on this, except it won't have the door. And the back on this won't have the little mirror thing. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start this. All right, let's see. Let me do this one first. Okay, even though the black and white looks kind of cool, that's not how we're going to leave it. So what I'm going to do is get my black gesso here that is very thick, so I'm going to have to thin it down quite a bit. Um, let's see what brush I want to use for this. I'm going to use maybe something like this. No. Well, well, maybe this will work. Anyway, I want to be able to go in here, but I don't want to get rid of all of my, um, I'm just putting a little bit of water in the cap because this is really thick. And I want to put this on very lightly because I don't want to fill in all the cracks that my, um, that I put in there. So I want it. I don't want it too thick, but I'm just going to go back over this, and this is just to make it black again. Or at least dark gray. And good. Now the cracks are still there. And if some of this chips off and stuff, that's okay. That just adds to the character. And I don't want it as dark as the rest of it, so it works out. But I want it a little bit darker. Let me move a little bit more in here. This, cra this cap is broken. I don't know how that happened, but I'm going to have to figure out another cap to put on there. It's, it's um, somehow cracked. So I'm going to let that dry. And do this one. I wonder how that broke. Anyway, I don't want to have to put some, have to get something else with water. Okay, now... I could have used my other mat underneath it, too. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I have them all sitting right next to me. Okay, so what I'm going to do on this that needs to dry, and I will use my mat now that I've thought about it. I have like four of these sitting right next to me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is not, there's not a lot that I'm going to do to this, it's going to be pretty easy, but I'm going to take this picket fence, just 
uh, Distress Spray Stain. It's not an oxide. And then I have this um, Peel Paint. And I'm just going to add a little bit more color to this. So I'm just going to spray. Ooh, this is very messy sometimes. Yeah, see, I don't like it because it's kind of hard to control sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and spray that with water. And what that'll do is it'll make kind of a cloud look to it. Because that round circle is not what I wanted. And I really need paper towel. Okay, and I'm just going to take this, and I'm just going to kind of go like that, because I don't really want it to be like a round circle. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Okay, and it'll it'll spread out more in a little bit. And then this, um, this peel paint, I'm going to put on the bottom. See, this doesn't spray like that. They sp I don't know. Okay, and on this one, I'm just going to do a little bit of that. Okay, and I'm going to let those soak in. You see how it looks kind of like clouds now? It'll blend in with the blue a little bit. This will blend in. And so that's, that's pretty much what I want. And I'm going to let that dry before we do anything with it. See, that white one really makes a big old mess all the time. I don't know what the deal is with that. Oh, here we go. I just smeared it. Just smeared it. Cover. And it's just about dry. I'm going to hit it with the heat gun a little bit. So there's still quite a bit of crackle in there. You can still see it. I don't know if you guys can. And what I'm going to do is I am going to Take, I'll do this, here we go. I have some rub and buff in three different colors. I have, um, let's see, Grecian gold, gold leaf, and antique gold. And I am basically going to be using my finger because I think it works better than anything. Let's see. have not even used that or the other one I think nope so we shall see this is kind of a brown gold and then this one's kind of let's see. and I bought this in a little kit it had all three colors okay so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the gold leaf it seems like it has a little bit coming out the top there there we go and this is kind of a it doesn't take much I have too much on my finger right now and I'm gonna take it and kind of go around the edges and it doesn't take a lot to do this that's why you really go sparingly so okay and then I'm gonna go over the top of everywhere that I have I've got it on every finger so I've got to use all my fingers and some of it will get on you know the other parts of it and that's kind of what you want And the less you have on your fingers, the less it will go on here. So, and I'm just using what's left over on my fingers, and then I'll come back and get more. Oh, see, there's a big blob on my finger right there. Let's see if I can take some of that off. A lot of it's coming off. 
it just a bit I had like a bunch under my fingernail and it just hit that one spot I think this has a little bit too much right there in that corner okay that started getting the white off on there so I don't want that Let's go back over it well, the oil's coming out of the top of this it's like it's not mixed well okay so I think that's enough of that color I'm doing a little bit more on the tops right here and I may not even use the other one let me see I don't know if it's going to be enough of a difference to do that I may just leave it for now and then um let me see it's a little bit lighter but you can barely tell the difference and I don't want to get it to where there's no black showing so I'm just going to hit it in a couple spots I just don't think you can tell the difference. There's not that much of a difference in them. Um, all right, let me see. Antique gold seems like it's a little bit, little bit lighter. And I'm only doing it just to have different shades in there. Not really any, any their real reason I don't want to fill in all the cracks so I gotta be careful not to get too much but I want it to have a little bit more gold yeah that's good I've tried doing this with a brush before and you just don't have enough control. Okay, that's good. Okay, that added a little bit more to it. That's good. All right, so we're going to move those over. And now what I'm going to do, you see the reason why we put the extra um, texture paste on there is look at all the detail that it added to this. It looks completely different than if you would have just left it the way that it was. Um, okay, so now try and find a spot on here that is not messed up. I can clean it off to some degree, but... Let's see, I'm going to just use a pen to mark around it and make it smaller than what it, I'm going to go right here. And I'm just going to attach this to the back. That even wrote on there. Okay. <clears throat> So I am going to cut this out because it kind of has a mirrored effect to it and it's gold. And I couldn't find any silver. I was going to do it in silver, but anyway, I'm going to put that on the back. And I am just going to use my 3-in-1 glue. And I think I'll just put it right here. I just need it to hold this down until I glue it onto the top. Sure, I get it on there to where none of it's sticking out. Okay. That's it. The other part, 
We have a little tiny spot we need to dry. Okay, that's drying up, I think. So, same thing. We're just going to do the same thing. That's the lighter color. Mm. All right, we'll do this. And then a little bit too much on my finger. Just kind of go. And you can see how the cracks, you can really see them. I hope you can see it. And I'm going to get some on this other finger, so. Since I put too much, I don't want to waste it. I'm trying to stay just on this section, but it's kind of hard, so it is going to go off on the other. And that's okay, because I don't want it to be black all over. I do want gold, but I do want to hit the, 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 the parts that have this, the um, texture paste first.
Now what I want to do is leave that dry. It should have. I am basically just going to put that on the top. And that is my, that's my cover, guys. That's all I'm going to do to it. I could put, you know, I've got some copper. I could put copper on there. I don't know. I just don't think it needs it. I mean, I really don't. I think it'll be just fine. I could put a little bit of it. Let's see how it looks. Might not like it. Mm. I don't know. I'll put a little on there. This stuff is really dried up, so it's not going to go on very well anyway. So let me get some of the water and put it in here and see if I can get it to come up a little. I don't know if it makes that much of a difference. It does add, you know, a different patina to it. I could put some green in there too with it. That'd be kind of cool. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I didn't do that much in the middle because I'm going to have to do this now. I have to take a little bit of water. Hopefully I can get that going okay. Copper. And put a little bit of copper in here. Okay, I think we're okay. I do think that we could definitely put more patina on this. I don't know. I don't know. It just doesn't, it just doesn't look right. Maybe I need to put more black in there. I put 
too much color right there. So I'm going to take my, which one is that? That is Walnut Stain. And I'm going to go over this a little bit too bright in my spots. And it will tone it down a little bit. I think I'm going to do the same thing to this. Just kind of vintage it up. It's the metallic was a little bit too shiny. I like having all the colors on there, but I don't I don't like it looking all new. Okay, I think that's good enough for now. Probably be good if I put the other top on this, but I don't know it is. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, and if I decide to put more black or something in later, I, I might, but I, I like it the way it is. I'm going to go ahead and just glue that down. And I'm just going to use my 3-in-1 to glue this down. And that is my cover. not to put too much this time and this cover has warped a little bit um from it getting you know wet because it is it is um okay I'm gonna put that semi straight and that is it guys that is my cover I'm going to have to put something on that to hold it down. Okay, we've got a few minutes. I'll see what I can do as far as getting done. Um, let's take our other one. Okay, so on this one, now we have kind of clouds up here, and then we have a little green down here. Okay, so I'm going to take a napkin, and we are going to put that on here. And you guys know the drill, because... I do this all the time and I hopefully I'll get done if I don't then I don't know I'll just show you the finished product where'd my tape go okay okay What I'm going to do is cut out some flowers to put on there. And I'm I'm going to be doubling them up. So it's going to be like I will put a few on and then I better put the top on this. We'll be having some fun. I'm going to go ahead and use my little water thing. You could easily use a, um, a paintbrush. I think a lot of times that's even extra easier. So what are we doing right here? Because I don't think all of this, the rest of this will fit in there. And I can always layer it on there later. And I'm going to do this to where it has like a jagged edge even on the bottom. I usually put them in more light, you know, smaller but what I'm going to do is I'll be layering these on there so we'll be putting more you shall see okay so I'm going to put this at the bottom let's see what do I want to put on there I think I'll cut it off right here and then I will probably use this piece too again. All right, so I'm going to put that there. I'm going to take some of this top off here that we don't need. All right. 
Okay, I think that's good. Now, what'll happen is you'll see the green behind here. And that's why I went ahead and put that in there. So this would blend more and it'd make a little bit more sense. Um, and I'm going to take my glue stick and just put glue on here first. And the main reason I'm doing it with the glue stick is that I don't want to reactivate the oxide, which the glue will anyway, but the less I do it, the better. Okay, so I'm going to put that on there. Oh, I was going to do the, but I didn't want it to be straight across. I'm going to go, I thought I did that. Oh, I just didn't tear it. That's what happened. I didn't want it exactly straight across on the bottom. I wanted it kind of feathered. Yeah, that's partly that's part of the reason that you put the green on the bottom too. And then I just kind of smooth it out. We got a bump right there. Put that off there. And I am going to put glue on top, so don't worry. Okay, let me get any spots that are sticking up. Put that down. Okay. Got a crease right there we need out. I just smooth it with my hands, and then when I go later, I'll do it with my brush. Now this piece that we cut out, I'm going to take a little bit off of that. I like to layer it, um, and I'm going to put more flowers in there, because I think it's kind of empty right here, so and it is right there too. Let me see if I can get another piece that I like, because I don't like the same colors being next to each other. Let's see, I might even take some flowers from here. I already did it on the back, but let me see. Hmm, let me take some from here. Now, sometimes I think it would be easier just for me to use a brush, but I've kind of gotten used to using this now. Okay, let me that. All right, and I still want to make that not so perfect on the bottom. I don't like that. Pull that. I don't know if I'm going to use all of this piece, but I want some different colors in that section. Hmm. Where'd my, this is my little door and it's going to go here. So the flowers are going to be behind it. And then I want to have a bird or butterfly or whatever stuff up there. I've got a bird here and a butterfly, but it bugs me that this bird is um, yellow and Let's see. I think I like this one better. So I might cut that bird out. This is a different napkin. So. Just kind of placing where things are going to go. Maybe that up here and then a butterfly over here. And I think we'll be good. Okay, so what butterfly do I want to use? This one. How about, <clears throat> how about this purple one right here? I'm going really fast. You guys would take your time. Let me see how this guy is going to look. I 
can get that side part off a little bit more. Okay. Well, I may be making it harder than it should be, but I don't like a lot of extra paper and extra scenery in there if I can help it. Okay, so we're going to put you there. We're going to put you. I wish I could that off without ripping it okay so you're gonna go there and you're gonna go here and that's gonna go there okay so I think we're good with the placement and I could put more over here let's see maybe I could put that right there that's what I was talking about, the layering part of this. Uh, I don't know if that will work. I need a different piece. Hmm. I've got this cool little bird nest thing over here. But I really don't want to put that in there. I think I'm going to put this in here again. Only I'm going to put it up higher. And I may layer it over the other part. I'm going to put that over here. I'm going to take a lot of that off. All right. So let's see. What if I put that here? And then I put that over here. I don't know if I want to cover that. I could just do above it. And put that right there. And then I could do the same thing right here. See what I mean by layering? You're just kind of putting more and more flowers. Because they'll all blend in when you put them on there. Okay, I think I'm going to do that. I think that'll work. I know these will be behind it, but I don't want it to be so blank right around the sides. Okay, so we're going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and put my glue over here. Of course, you can't really glue the napkin because you don't want to, um, you don't want to, here, I probably would really would like to take more of that off. Let me see if I can get that off. Oops, did I rip it underneath? You won't be able to see that anyway. I don't know why I'm doing that. I'm worrying about it. You want to, that's not even going to be seen. Being silly. Being silly. Okay, so that's going to go there. It's going to come off of the side, but that's okay. All right, and then that will go here. So that should be good. Okay, and then we're going to do that. I had this big old elaborate thing I was going to do with these, but I decided not to because I really wanted to get both of these done. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Did I just take off its beak? Or part of its head? Now oh, we're pretty good. And then do that. I didn't really see another bird in there I like too much, so you're going to have to do, birdie. Okay. Anyway. I'm going to do, unless I see those little birds up there. Nah, I think I'll leave that. 
or I could just put another butterfly. Why don't I take that off? Oh, come on, bird, get off. I'm just going to do another butterfly. Since I don't really have any birds I like, I'll just put another butterfly there. I'm going to put my, see if I can tear that. There we go. Go ahead and put my glue on top. And I'm just going to use my um, matte gel, but I'm going to go ahead and thin it out a little bit because it is pretty thick. See if I use this top, let's see if it leaks. That was weird. The only thing I could think of is I must have dropped it at some point and it broke. But I don't remember doing that, but who knows. So I am just getting this a little bit thinner so it doesn't um, tear it. And I'm using a really thin brush, fan brush. Okay. And dry this real quick, and then I will be right back. Okay, so now what I want to do um, is what I usually do at this point. It does have to be really dry, but you kind of sand it. And to me, what this does is it kind of um, pushes it into where it looks more like a painting, that like it's not sitting on top. It gets all the rough parts off. Now it will distress it and there there will be spots where you don't, you know, have 
um, you don't have um, your napkin because it takes off the rough spots. But that, I like that. I think it makes it look like it's kind of painted on them. Don't worry about this. To me, doing this is what makes gives it the look that it's part of your um, part of the piece. And I'm taking all the extra off the edges. Okay. Now what I do is I will take my, and I just got a new watercolor set, guys, and I'm going to link this for you. But it came with brushes, and then it came with a little bit of paper. And let's see, what else did it come with? I'm trying to remember. Um, and a little pouch and a little swatch and it was very inexpensive and they're pretty decent. I mean, they're not like, you know, amazing quality, but for what I'm using them for. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I am going to go in and blend in any of these parts that to me have, that don't blend in that well, like see up here. So I'm just going to take, let me get another cup. Need a little water in here. Um, so like around these butterflies, I will just take a little bit of blue watercolor and just kind of go in there. And this is a little bit darker, but it'll it'll blend in. Maybe take a little bit of white with that. And just kind of go in there around the edges. And that'll just kind of blend it in. My fingers are so dirty, I'm afraid to touch it. Normally I would do that, but... Okay, and that, what it does is it takes the those edges off. They'll blend in pretty good, but you want to make sure that you um, do the best you can to kind of get rid of them. All right, so now that I've done that, I'm going to take my door, if I can can't find my door, here it is. Okay, and I'm going to take my door, finally, and get it ready to put on there. The only thing I'm going to do with that is I have this stuff, and it's called, um, it's just, um, boo, I've used it before, American Decor Cream Wax. And it's just kind of like a stain. And I'm just going to put this on there in a few. Because I want it really a little bit darker. And I really want it to look a little bit more vintage -y, So I'm going to just kind of do it with my finger. Okay. And you could use anything to do this. Just you could use more distress ink or whatever you want to do. I'm just doing it because I have it. Okay. And I am not even going to wait for this to dry all the way. I'm just going to kind of do that. Okay. I put that on here. And then I want that to look a little bit rustier, though. God, what can I put on there? I don't really have anything that's rusty to make it look rusty. Oh, well, I'll do it later. 
So on this, I'm going to cut this, these little, this is meant to have a brad in there. It's really a brad. I'm going to cut it down so it's not as sticking out the side. It still needs to be there to some degree, otherwise it'll fall out. Okay. I'm going to put just a tiny bit of glue. It really wasn't a tiny bit. Oh, well. That's what got me last time. I was trying to take off some of the glue. All right. There we go. It's on. It's not going anywhere. Okay, now I lost my little door knocker thing. Oh, there it is. All right, guy. I guess I'm going to pitch you right here. Okay. And hopefully you stay down. Any piece right there. So there's the little door knocker. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put wax on here, and I'm only doing that because I really want it on there so it'll seal it. And I'm just taking a few of my wax pellets, and I can do it on this mat because it's it's heat resistant, and that's probably too many. And I've heated up my iron to a low temperature. And all I'm going to do is go like this. It work, it's so fast. And it dries super quick. So. And what this will do is this will seal it. And without having to go over the whole thing with, um, with like Mod Podge or something like that. Which reactivates your... Um, reactivate your distress oxide okay so that's it I've just got a few pieces on the side and I'm going to take off go over it one more time to make sure it's on there nice and thin this is a super easy way to seal things guys and it doesn't feel sticky or anything like that and I bought a pack of those little pellets. And like, gosh, they last me forever. Okay, this has moved a little bit. Uh, okay, we're going to have to deal with that later. And I don't think the wax did that either. Okay. So anyway, I went ahead and did that. And it'll be dry in just a second. It takes no time at all comes out and if there's if it's on there too thick like I can see in this spot all you do here let me do this real quick so I can show you you just kind of melt it again you can take a paper towel or a wipe or something and just wipe it right off or you can just kind of squish it to the other end like that okay so that is that. Where did my door go? All right, so now I'm just going to hot glue my door on. And that's it. Then I'm done. And I will fix that later, but I'm not going to mess with it right now. You guys get the gist. And I got to work fast with the hot glue gun. Okay, so this is just going to go straight in the middle right here so that is my cover guys that is everything okay so anyway here's our two covers i think they're cute or our different disc journals one is this is supposed to be a mirror <laughs> okay and then this one is a um this is a door a little string on there so thanks for joining me and just realize that this is a really cool way matter of fact i'll just put this on there i don't know where the bottom part is i hit just go like that this flips right in there we have our 
cover. I have the back. I'll have to go get that because I've already done that. But this goes fits right on. And then you have a cool cover for your very easily made disc journal. And then for the other one, you just put that on just like this. It goes right on. And remember we punched the holes in this because the um, it wouldn't fit in the um, um, punch. So if you really wanted to, you could do that on every single paper that you put in there. You don't have to have the punch. So, And if you did not watch that, go back and watch it. And it gives you the mechanics of how you make these. Because that's kind of important. This is just the fun part. So anyway, there you go. And then I'll put the, put the back on, which I already have done on this one. I can put it on. And yeah, those are our two, those are our two journals. Hi everybody, I just wanted to show you real quick um, a few things that I did to kind of change these up a little. I was looking at this one and I thought it needed um, more after I uh, put the wax on, the flowers kind of blended into the background. So I went ahead. Uh, dies here um, on here to give it some dimension and just kind of color, colored them with um, watercolors and then went over them with a little bit of Mod Podge instead of the wax so it wouldn't just blend in too much and I also did that on the back. Um, I put a few um, um, Sizzix dies in the back but I had waxed them in and they tended to recess in and so I put a few more of these flowers on top and I just did that to kind of give it some dimension and more interest um, and I I already had them so I thought that kind of added a little bit to it um, on this one I just added I had some green mica powder that I put a little uh, water and mixed it and then just put it around here just to give it a little bit more um, patina and I added a little bit more of the copper um, on there and that's all I did just to kind of you know give it just a little bit more so anyway those are my two um, disc bound journals of course they're not full but eventually they will be and I'm happy with the covers and how they turned out and again they're two different kinds so hopefully you watch the uh, first and second video so you can see how to make them and uh, I'm not going to do any kind of closure on these because I figure they'll get pretty full and just use them that way and um, that you know of course the bigger discs are um, gonna hold more than the smaller discs so you know you can and of course you can change these discs out as you go I mean I could put these on those this on this but whatever Okay, so that's it, guys. That's all I wanted to show you on that. It's just a few changes I made, and I hope you get a chance to try something like this. Thanks a lot.